Hello everyone. It's been a while since I last made a short advanced vocabulary video, so I thought it was about time. Now in these videos I explain the meanings and uses of words and phrases which are perhaps a little bit difficult to understand just from the dictionary definitions. And in this video we're looking at the interesting and useful C2 adverb, hitherto. hitherto. Now, you may have come across hitherto before in, in written texts, perhaps when you're reading more formal texts. And that's important to, to take note of because hitherto is really quite a formal word. I don't recommend that you use it in your spoken English. There will be very few situations where hitherto would be appropriate in spoken English. We really use it in, in written English and in in quite formal contexts, so in essays, uh, maybe in informal reports, in proposals, and maybe in formal letters too, but be careful. It would sound a little bit silly and maybe even pretentious if you used this word in a colloquial conversation. I recently came across the word hitherto in a C2 proficiency uh, part one writing task. So this is the essay in the C2 proficiency Cambridge English exam you get two short texts which you must read and then evaluate and summarize and this text in particular was uh, referring to the invention of the aeroplane and this is the sentence in which hitherto appears the aeroplane rapidly went from a miraculous culmination of man's obsession with flight the realization of which had hitherto been mere fantasy to the instrument of death and destruction in two world wars and beyond Okay, so perhaps you can infer the meaning of hitherto from the context, right? Had hitherto been mere fantasy. But anyway, I'm going to tell you the meaning. Hitherto basically means until now or until that point in time. So it depends on whether you're talking about the present. In that case, hitherto would be referring to something until now. Um, but if you're speaking about something that happened in the past, it would be until that point that is being spoken about in that in in the context so up to that point it had just been fantasy hitherto been mere fantasy but let's look at a few more examples so you can get a really good grasp of how and when we use this adverb so the first example i'm giving could perhaps be used in the context of a report or maybe a proposal the measures taken by the town council have hitherto had little effect so the measures taken by the town council have hitherto, so until this point, because we're talking in the present here, that up till now, until now, um, have had little effect. So have hitherto had little effect. So these measures until now have had little effect. Maybe in the future they will have some effect or more effect, but up till now, hitherto, they have had little effect. Another example, at the end of the book, the main character finally expresses some hitherto hidden emotions. Okay, here perhaps we're thinking of a, a review, right? A book review. So at the end of the book, just at the end of the story, the main character finally expresses some hitherto hidden emotions. So until that point in the story, in the book, this main character hadn't expressed any emotions. They had, had been, until that point, hidden. So in this case, we're referring to the past, so it's until that point in the past. Okay, let's look at one more example. The long-term effects of social media use are hitherto unknown. The long-term effects of social media use are hitherto, so until this point, in this case, again, we're referring to the present, uh, until this point, unknown, until now, until now they are unknown. Uh, because social media use is quite a, a recent uh, phenomenon, so we don't know the results yet, so until now they are unknown, Hitherto, they are unknown. Okay, so as I said, I don't necessarily recommend that you use this adverb unless you're really confident that you're using it in the right context and in the right way. But of course, we don't only learn new vocabulary to be able to use it, we learn it to be able to understand it too. That's equally valid and equally useful. You know, we, we have our active vo vocabulary that we use uh, regularly and the passive vocabulary which perhaps we don't use but we understand and that's very important to be able to to understand written texts and and uh, for our listening comprehension too okay so use it or lose it start writing your own examples share them in the comments 
and perhaps even use them in your, your essays for the Cambridge English exams. Okay, I'll see you very soon for another video.